Hello friends, welcome back. Let us continue with our journey in terms of marketing of innovations, which is definitely built upon with the context we have referred to and dwelled upon in terms of innovations in marketing. And here I am taking you towards a very important question or a thought, because as of now we are trying to build up that marketing of innovation requires a different approach. So, is it really so and how far it is relevant for us to think that way, because the journey further in this subject is actually based upon today's or this session. And, and the element which we are discussing here is that marketing of innovation a fundamental change of thought process. Is it really a fundamental change of thought process which is required here? So, that is the element which you know we have to dwell upon. And when we say that does it require a fundamental change of thought process? So, thought process the complete alignment of whatever we have been thinking you would have heard these kind of words like you know learning and unlearning before, but I do not subscribe to that too much because how can you unlearn something so easily, but authors are intelligent they mean to say that just put it aside. Although I would recommend in a slightly different manner that use that learning wisely in consonance with for you know in consonance with and for, for developing future learning. So, if you do not want to unlearn it is fine with me, but use it wisely in terms of as far as graduating things in terms of future learning as far as the situation goes and that is what I pr uh, precisely do, because I, I tried to do that many times personally and I with, without any prejudice I could not unlearn whatever I have learned up till now. So, that is a perspective and I you see it is a huge repository of memories your brain you just cannot wash anything away, but then when you keep on reading eminent authors, when you keep on reading good books by good authors, when you keep on reading authors like Daniel Kahneman, Thomas Lockwood, Philip Kotler, Peter Drucker, Mahatma Gandhi one of the most eminent authors at least in my life. If you read such authors then that learning which you would have had up till now that would graduate and take itself up with a wider context which will broaden your horizons that definitely can happen. So, let us see how this thought process go about. So, you see innovation depend as much on mindsets as on technology. Ringberg T, Reel and M and Ryden P 2019 they talk about this. In a paper Jayaratna N and would be in 2008 <coughs> every innovation is new thing, but not every new thing is an innovation you know. So, they talk about that innovation is the display of the ultimate achievement of human brain power. For an idea a product or service to become innovative it is it has to break with traditions slightly you know add up to or grow wide. In other words it has to involve a fundamental philosophical paradigm shift that is a change in the underlying principles on which the product or service is based. Paradigmatic perspective has to be addressed to paradigm shift has to be brought into and thought process has to be expanded or a newer perspective to the thought process has to be seen that actually gets converted into innovative products and innovative usage many a times and we have talked about these kind of things earlier as well. Authors have been and here before I go uh, you know further in this discussion one thing which is very important and I would advise you to keep that thing in your mind when we are talking of changing the thought process and when we are talking about this with reference to marketing of innovations there are two three elements which we have to focus upon and I would be devoting quite some time on these expansion of these thought processes and elements. 
one i have been addressing in terms of uh, you know when we were talking about innovations in marketing for example i emphasized upon this fact that segmentation to micro segments to target has evolved in due course of time as far as you know and and that is how marketers they change their thought process on the basis of the insights which we uh, which they gained from the customers one more thing apart from many others which we would be talking about one more thing which we are precisely going to discuss but i should mention here is that now when we are thinking in terms of marketing of innovations we have to broaden our perspective around positioning of the products as such also and we must be carrying a thought that positioning although has been discussed as a concept wherein you develop and create an image in the uh, create an image of the product in the minds of the customers but when we are talking with this regard marketing of innovations i would strongly recommend that you try and revisit that thought and try and understand that positioning must have a flexible context to itself so that it keeps on evolving in due course of time and i would be talking about this but i'm just giving you food for thought try and find out how your mobile phone is positioned in your mind and try to talk to some other person that how their mobile phone is positioned in their mind or her or his mind and try and find out that is the positioning universal in terms of mobile phone goes in both the minds or all the minds and you will start getting the answers to the you know thoughts which i am proposing in front of you in terms of positioning coming back to how authors have been talking about as far as the situation goes so you know design thinking is you know related to or associated with fundamental change of thought process and we are wondering about that should we be actually looking at a complete paradigm shift in terms of thought process so one of the best approaches to innovation is adopting a design thinking mentality that can be a first step through which we can expand our thought process perspective and we have already talked about value networks so keep those value network thinking in your mind and now start focusing upon design thinking and in a short while from now i will try to prove that once again so design thinking is a solutions based human centric mindset excellent but for solutions we have to uh, find out the problems first for that we have to go for appropriate marketing research it's a practical way to strategize and design using insights from observations and research that is what the point is innovation is defined as a product process service or business model featuring two critical characteristics novel and useful it should be novel and useful yet there is no use in creating something new and novel if people won't use it and there are many innovations and we have talked about that and uh, you know you look into the list of the patents and i uh, suggested that you go to derwent and excel scout and these kind of repositories and you would find n number of patents there and uh, not seeing the light of the day so design thinking offers innovation the upgrade it needs to inspire meaningful and impactful solutions thomas lockwood an eminent thinker of our times and a great design thinker in his uh, you know edited book design thinking talks about these kind of elements one about design if innovation drives differentiation what drives innovation excellent thought the answer hidden in plain sight is design and design thinking design contains the skills to identify possible futures invent exciting products build bridges to customers crack wicked problems and more the fact is if you want to innovate you got to design and you see many examples i would have shared with you as far as uh, the whole scenario goes and try to find out about one water purification system called slingshot i would not go beyond this i'm just giving you the name of the product try to find out and you would find the inventor of this product is one of the greatest innovators of our times and he has done so much he has developed climbing wheelchairs as well people who are unable to walk in their own wheelchairs their wheelchairs would climb the stairs so instead of putting ramps everywhere we can, we have we or we can have climbing wheelchairs try and find about the inventor and his products and slingshot specially you would realize what i am referring to and what thomas lockwood in, uh, intends to say 
Design is the process of imagining and planning the creation of objects, systems, buildings, vehicles, etc. It is about creating solutions for people. Slingshot, climbing wheelchairs. Thinking like a designer can transform the way you develop products, services, processes and even strategy that is what Tim Brown says. <coughs> even strategy. Keep this in mind and look at this. Precisely, you know, you just look at this product and you would realize that everything which we have been talking about till now, including value networks, value webs, value chains, marketing research, innovations in marketing, marketing of innovations can be picturized with reference to this simple product which touches the life of almost everyone in this world as of now. Four sets of wheels and a cart made of wire with, with a strength you know related to the physics of the product. Try and find about how it is made. So, one element is convenience, one is impulse buying, one is child friendly design, higher average transaction value, efficiency, store layout and design, larger purchases. These are the evident elements associated with these elements, you know the, these uh, oh, sorry this product. And I will just give you a clue and I would be talking about that. If you will look into larger purchases, then larger production, larger inventory, larger supplies and it goes on and on in terms of as far as the whole system goes. So, larger purchase can be supported through larger production and larger supplies or larger inventories. Larger production means larger raw materials, larger uh, you know kind of number of players and so on. And this kind of a thing instigates several kinds of things. I am not saying this shopping cart is the only thing which is responsible for larger production in terms of purchase goes, but it is one of the enablers and that is a proven thing. Let us see some other elements in detail. So, shopping carts shaping buying behavior and shopping carts shaping complete value webs also that is how we should be reading, uh, reading this element. So, along with buying behavior value webs or value networks if you want to say or simply value chains. The shopping cart is a classic example of design thinking in action. It demonstrates how empathy problem definition user centric design, iterative improvement and successful implementation can result in a solution that not only addresses a specific problem, but also enhances the overall user experience in retail setting. Just when you take a shopping cart in your hands this time, try and think about these or just take the print out of the preceding slide, this one and carry it in your hands and try and imagine what we are talking at, talking of. When the housewife got her basket full, it was too heavy for her to carry and she stopped shopping. Uh, although I, I do not subscribe to this way that only housewife should be carrying the basket basically, you know it is it's a different world altogether, but this was in 1970. So, excerpt from an interview with Goldman 1970, you know this, this, uh, this is how Mr. Goldman talked about. So, it is not my individual view, but those days it might have happened that way. The shopping cart was invented by Silvan Goldman, an American businessman in the 1930s. From since then, the social structure has changed, you know, many fold. So, Goldman was a grocery store owner in Oklahoma and he came up with the idea of shopping cart to make shopping more convenient for his customers and to boost sales. This shopping cart would become so relevant for elderly population no one ever imagined. Mr. Goldman also never imagined that this shopping cart would compel departmental stores and retail chain owners to think in terms of a different kind of an uh, you know a connectivity based kind of a production and distribution system and today AI supports that. AI preempts everything to take it to that level wherein it goes you know the indication goes to the manufacturer that this product has been sold. So, this kind of a flow of the product is going on and several other elements which we would be talking about in the AI section after this. So, Sylvan Goldman's first shopping cart design consisted of a folding chair frame with a basket mounted, mounted on the seat. This early design allowed shoppers to wheel their groceries around the store and carry more items than they could by hand. 
it became an experience. And that is how probably shopping malls or shopping uh, you know departmental stores would have been thought of creating an experience around. Otherwise, they were thought of being you know just a place and you go and buy and come out. The idea quickly gained popularity and the design evolved to the familiar four wheel metal frame shopping cart with a wire basket. I do not know if we can get this data from somewhere and you can ask someone uh, from the earlier stages uh, when, when you know early departmental stores or shopping uh, malls came in how far people were eager to go to departmental stores to purchase few things. Today, if you are going somewhere to the departmental store and shopping, you know, shopping mall or somewhere to purchase few things and you say, you ask someone, you know, what are you doing and are, do you have some spare time, uh, we are going to the shopping mall and uh, let us say departmental store. No one largely says no, because that has, that has an experience based kind of a value. I am not saying shopping cart is the reason for that. There are several other reasons to that, but then shopping cart is an influencer to that. Goldman's innovation not only improved the shopping experience, but also increased the amount of goods customers purchased. Shopping carts revolutionized the retail industry and became a standard feature in supermarkets and grocery stores around the world. The contribution to retail is still evident today as shopping carts continue to be a fundamental tool for shoppers in stores of all kinds. Vons A 2018, How the Shopping Cart Explains Global Consumerism, University of California Press. It is a good article and I definitely suggest that you should read that. Does marketing of innovation always require a foreseen role of IT and AI? And you see, when we are talking of this kind of an integration in terms of the whole scenario goes, when we are talking of uh, examples like shopping carts and shopping malls, uh, you know, in relation to each other. When we are graduating to a situation wherein you know somehow look at this picture once more and you would realize that you know larger purchase, production, inventory, flow of inventory, distribution of goods, rational distribution of goods and at the time when they are needed and preempting the goods where they would be needed and then associating the fluctuations in the prices which you can make on the basis of the movement of the goods with the help of AI, several elements now have evolved the story probably might have started from shopping carts probably but then what ai does keep imagining shopping cart and the role of ai and keep imagining how and why have they they, they are so frequently changing the prices in shopping malls and departmental stores how they are actually announcing sales now and then you have moved into a in, into a shopping mall or a large departmental store at 11 o'clock uh, in the morning and somehow you know it's slightly dull and by 12:30 it's uh, lots of hustle over there and then i would not say chaos but but then people are moving from this side that side and somehow you know it, it, it's uh, sort of and suddenly someone announces that there is a quick sales for next half an hour on this kind of a product how are they doing this AI has a role to play, digitalization has a role to play, data has a role to play there and that is why you know and then look at all of these kind of products. What role AI and IT play in marketing of below mentioned innovations this way and that way also. So, it is not that it is playing the role everywhere, but many a times it does not play at a role at all or a minimum role. So, does marketing of innovation always require a foreseen role of IT and AI? You may say no, but today we have stopped thinking without that and I will just talk about this. So, look at Velcro, look at wheeled suitcases and we have been referring to these kind of examples since quite some time. Scotch Bright, Scotch Tape, Shopping Cart, Quechua Tent. So, marketing of innovation does not always require the foreseen role of IT and AI, but the use of information technology and artificial intelligence can often be beneficial in promoting and supporting innovative products and services. That has become a sort of a benchmark and standard as of now. No company wants to call itself which is not resorting you know to AI or those kind of things. They, they feel that they would be left behind if they would do this somehow. However, in future artificial intelligence appears likely to influence marketing strategies including business models, sales processes and customer service options as well as consumer behavior or customer behavior. And it is traversing into almost everything, even preempting the kinds of diseases and those kind of things which we are, because you see there is so much that has to be collated which AI is enabling. 
So, Davenport T. Guha A. Greval D. and Bresgott T. 2020, they have written this article on how artificial intelligence will change the future of marketing. Journal of Academic of Marketing Sciences, a very good journal. So, AI enabled media spending worldwide 2022 is 370 billion US dollars, very big number. AI in marketing, global market value 27.4 billion US dollars, which is going to increase multifold. We will just see. While big companies are fueling money into AI marketing, startups with the hopes of innovating their processes, marketers themselves are getting more and more creative with the deployment of AI developments from more refined targeting to creative content production. We are graduating this way, that way. But how we are enabling the system, let us see and statistics definitely proves that. But as I said, not everywhere, it is not that everywhere we should be using AI or we have to use AI. In fact, the technology is being populated on such a scale that the global market revenues of AI in marketing are expected to grow from 27.4 billion dollars in 2023 to 107.4 billion in 2028. I cannot even immediately translate it into rupees or something basically, it is huge money, please do that. So, now look at this. Market value of AI in marketing worldwide from 2020 to 2028 and now you see in 2020 it was 12.05 billion US dollars. Now it is going to be 107.54 uh, billion dollars growing exponentially with a slight growth in you know as far as 21, 22, 23 goes. But then taking a huge leap and 27, 28 we are forecasting on the basis of the linear progression. There are a lot of mathematics involved and uh, this is a credible site uh, Statista which is doing this. So, in 2021 the artificial intelligence market within the realm of marketing was valued at 15.84 billion US dollars and as I said 107.5 to two uh, uh, till 2028. AI is deeply embedded into the digital marketing landscape and based on the latest reports more than 80 percent of the experts within the industry are incorporating some form of AI technology into their online marketing endeavors. It is not that we just want to get away from analyzing things basically, but then human brain has a huge capacity in terms of visualization. So, if I am not focusing upon collating data or assembling and reassembling data and you know uh, making correlations in my brain, then I would be utilizing my creativity in terms of deciphering that and visualizing on the basis of that. And because computers are involved, so that would be more accurate as far as the technology the, this uh, you know analysis goes. So, it is better that AI is used for these kind of purposes and I use my brain for storytelling that means visualizing on the basis of the data I would have deciphering the way I want and that would actually enhance my intelligence and capacity and that capacity would be utilized with lots of differentiation. You see sometimes people say that AI would eliminate marketing or you know, uh, you know reduce differentiation. I say that it would increase differentiation. Why? Because once all of us have standardized data, then ultimately it would depend upon how we are interpreting that and interpretation would be diff different in terms of different people. And that is the best part of as far as using AI for larger part of uh, part of the world. So, this widespread adoption of artificial intelligence in marketing comes as no surprise. Considering the manifold advantages it brings including automation of tasks, personalized campaigns, sophisticated data analysis amongst others. When asked about marketers main application areas of AI in recent survey roughly 50 percent of the respondents from the US, Canada, the UK and the India mentioned ad targeting. Advertising is one of the mainstays and it would definitely go and traverse into several kinds of things. So, AI enabled spend worldwide 2022 as we talked about 370 billion US dollars. The digital marketing sector has been actively incorporating artificial intelligence over the past several years. Marketers and advertisers have been working with AI beforehand mainly for the better targeting of advertisements and the optional buying of ad spaces with programmatic advertising. AI's adeptness at collecting real time data is invaluable especially when it comes to understanding consumer behavior. As of now AI has been used in terms of rationalization of things. 
optimization of costs maximization of benefits for both the parties understanding consumer well reaching individual targets but as i said very soon we would be graduating in terms of differentiating our steps on the basis of the data which we would be having in front of us probably if i am told that these are you know 100 targets in front of you and this is the what the data says about them probably i would have 100 different thoughts which would be different in terms of at least 50 thoughts my contemporary or competitor would be having and that is precisely we are talking of and that is the relevance of this subject remember this we are talking in terms of innovations in marketing which is an individuals you know thought process we we are talking at large in terms of principles but how an individual would take clue from those and behave in terms of as far as or take steps in terms of marketing of innovations that depends largely on one's own understanding so chatbots and other machine learning technologies are deployed for various purposes in the customer experience journey such as tailored customization of content and product offerings as i said optimization is the mainstay as of now ai enabled services you know that is how the things are 2032 after 9 years or 10 years from now so this ai enabled advertising spending worldwide would be 1300 us billion dollars uh, it's very huge so branded ai other use cases in marketing in order to realize the advantages of ai some top industry professionals claim that it should be put at the side of marketing rather than fully replacing it that is what i am proposing and i am saying that it should be universalized as much as it can be so that marketing decision makers and experts who would you know become experts in due course of time and definitely uh, i should not be overstepping here but this subject can become a reason for you to become an expert on that so you would be taking a differentiated decision at the end of the day in line with this perspective major advertisers such as amazon have led the way in introducing personalized shopping recommendations and dynamic pricing this approach utilizes ai algorithms to lower prices during periods of low demand and increase them when demand is high we have talked about that In a more recent development, brands like Martini have ventured into the realm of image tools to generate entirely AI-created advertising campaigns for their products. By employing appropriate prompts and keywords, advertisers are now harnessing the creative capabilities of AI as well. The message is very clear: that you see, we do not necessarily have to think in terms of AI. You go to a street vendor. they are not using ai to as far as visualize the customer needs or planning for inventory or uh, giving good hot just now prepared food to the people who are going to them in lunch they they know how many customers are regular how many customers are coming to them and how what kind of inventory they should be keeping what kind of a sales volume they are projecting in this kind of a time and so on they are doing that without ai they are doing with ai intelligence although i sometimes normally say that intelligence cannot be artificial but when we use this word ai i presume that intelligent people would have thought of that the intelligence which comes from the machines should be called artificial because it is not their intelligence somehow but you see there are many intelligent people who are doing without ai there are many products largely sold products also which are doing without ai there are huge sweet vendors sweet shops in in uh, every city they are doing without ai they are cloth merchants they are doing without ai but then when we are going for larger usage of ai then it enables a different kind of a creative thing our brain comes away from what have we what whatever we have been analyzing and spending our energy in terms of analysis our brain supports us in taking decisions and those decisions are innovative that is why innovations in marketing and those decisions definitely supports support marketing of innovations which we are continuously going through i'll be coming back to you with lots of insights through and through and about this subject i'll be catching up back with you very shortly till then goodbye